If I could get a dollar for every time I've abandoned my main project, I would be a very rich man. You see? A very small amount of you may remember that more than a year ago, I was working on a Metroidvania game called Sewer Oasis. Although that video was posted about a year ago, I was actually working on the game two years ago. The project was originally developed with C-Sharp and Mono Game. It was going really well and through some really hacky methods, I already had two fully functional areas with abilities and NPCs in about two months of development. The first iteration of this project was eventually abandoned in order to remake the game from scratch with C++ and OpenGL. Due to time constraints and motivation issues, this too was abandoned. Now over two years later, with my newfound knowledge and experience, I'm going to be remaking that entire game with Bevy and Rust. I'd just like to add a disclaimer that this is going to be my full-time project from now on. I'm not just remaking a game to test the capabilities of Bevy like I did in this video 10 months ago. We're going all in and I'm going to be providing updates for the game as well. Back when I was working on this project, I actually had a somewhat active Discord server which I would be lying to myself if I didn't miss. After quitting YouTube for almost a full year, the Discord server just kinda died, so if you guys enjoyed this video, join my Discord server in the description to chat and make sure to subscribe. Alright, so the first thing that I did was to completely remake my old player sprite into something new because I felt like the old one was a bit unclean in the way that it was made. Keep in mind this sprite is not final. I hopped into Tiled, ripped my old tile set from the old project, and created a simple scene to test out the player movement in Bevy. After struggling with collisions as I always do for every project, we had the player moving around comfortably in the game. Except that's not entirely true. After adding some shapes to debug hitboxes and colliders in the game, I realized that my collisions were way off. They didn't work in low FPS environments and were not detecting the right collisions either. So I'm not gonna lie, I spent almost an entire day fixing this. Don't make your own custom physics, kids. These collisions will still probably come back to bite me in the future because I'm not sure if they are fully fixed for all collider types. Something that really helped me to fix the collisions was a tool called Bevy Editor PLS, which is actually amazing. One of the many features it offers is allowing you to see your scene in slow motion. It doesn't support Bevy 0.11 yet, which is the latest version of Bevy, which is kind of sad. The player now has accurate collisions, so they can't fall through the floor at high speeds. It even works at really low frame rates like 10 FPS, which I tested out. I also made a hitbox display which I can toggle on and off to debug the game. Bevy Editor PLS helped with all of these steps a great deal and you can see how convenient it is to detach from your player camera and be able to see the game world as a whole. To test out moving up and down through entrances in the game world, I also added these two new rooms and made a way to specify custom entrances that allow me to make more entrances in each room than the general four entrances north, south, east, and west that are pre-programmed. I added an entrance to the top of the main room, which shouldn't be accessible right now, but I added some tiles just to test it out. There are two entrances in the main room, and I'm thinking the top one will be accessible through an ability such as a double jump or something, which will make the player be able to reach new areas. I think that this is a massive improvement on my previous room system in the first version of the game two years ago, which implemented rooms in the code directly. It also loaded all the rooms at runtime, had a very unorganized, but sophisticated code base, not to mention I used like mode back then. Next, it was time to implement combat because I wanted to get a boss fight into the game. Yes, I know, priorities. First, I made several attack animations ranging from a down slash and two side slashes that would be alternated through whenever the player presses the attack button. I made the player halt when attacking and running, but not when they were in the air because this just made the movement feel more clean. Now it was time to design our first boss. This boss would be designed to be easy and allow the player to get a hold of the game before plunging into a more difficult game world. However, we first had to place the boss on our map. My thinking behind this boss was that the player should fight it after learning the basic movement of the game. Additionally, this boss is going to unlock a passageway that allows the player to reach new areas. About the movement in the game. While designing the passageway that led to the boss, I kept dying on this one jump. I know that this jump is possible because I pulled it off occasionally, but it was really hard to do. So I implemented something called Coyote Time. Games like Celeste do this as well to make the player feel more in control. It basically lets the player jump if they recently were on the ground. So if the player was on the ground 0.1 seconds beforehand for my game, they would still be able to jump. So you can see how this made the jumps dramatically easier. While I animate the boss in the background, I'm going to take this opportunity to remind you that I'm not going to be remaking the whole game in this video alone. 
so please don't post a comment about how the old game looked a lot better. Yes, it certainly does, because I had loads of features not implemented yet in this version. I'm also going to talk about my unique experience with Bevy. Starting off with how it's a lot harder to make some things in Bevy due to its ECS, entity component systems provide a much different experience from the usual object-oriented programming that many people choose to utilize in game development. ECS is much harder to use even though it is faster because it requires a lot more babysitting on the part of the programmer to get to work. Bevy also doesn't have a working scene system unlike many modern game engines, so it can be difficult to build up game systems from scratch. I overcame this particular struggle with tiled and a Rust library that helps me parse those tiled files and take information that I can add into my game world. If I kept talking about my struggles, this video would probably extend to twice its original length so I think it's safe to stop rambling and get back to the development of my game. You can see at this point that my boss has four different animations. These are all designed to telegraph his jump so that the player will know and be well aware of his movements. This boss is the first boss and it's not meant to be a hard boss so the telegraphs will take quite a while. I inserted our boss into the game world and added physics to him. He now bounces every few seconds. It's really not that complicated. Every time he hits a wall, he bounces off and changes direction in which he jumps. Sometimes he will randomly change jump direction, and occasionally he will even leap towards the player. These are all done in a slow enough way that the player can react to him. When his HP reaches zero, he despawns. This is still early development, so I didn't really bother making him do anything special, like give the player any coins, or play a masterful death animation. By the way, I am actually quite proud of the physics I've added to my game. They don't rely on any physics plugins, use array-based collisions for tile maps, are pretty powerful at low frame rates, all the while being able to add to any entity, now that I've modularized the design of the game. In fact, the player itself probably has over 6 custom components that control collisions, animation, movement, entrance data, and much more by now. This is another advantage of ECS. The design of your game can be extremely elegant and satisfying to see come to fruition. ECS forces you to be smart about the way you build your world, and it definitely pays off. Rust still doesn't have debugging though, which is pretty sad. Overall, I think I did manage to achieve a decent amount of progress on this journey to remake this abandoned project. The codebase and asset workflow in this project is definitely more manageable than what I had previously done in my prior two versions of this project. Part of this is due to Bevy and its ECS system, while the other part is just due to me becoming a better programmer. If you guys enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe. It would mean the world to me. Apart from that, have a good day.